I was so glad that I, you know, got into it. I wrote a book also. It just got published last month, uh, Senior Living Investing Made Easy. But essentially what it is is that our whole money structure, our whole economy is going to shift towards spending habits and living habits of the seniors. Welcome to Last Life Ever. My name is Jeff, and that over there is Jillian Sidoti. <laughs> that? Oh, weird images. that. I, like, I pointed the wrong way. I feel like the scarecrow <laughs> in the Wizard of Oz. Some go this way, some go that way. Jillian, you're in the middle today. You have the center of attention. Yeah. So why don't you tell us what we're doing, Jillian? Going well, let's, tell before us. you get to that, yeah. let, let's just quickly mention the other two pillars. The other two pillars. Yes. The, <laughs> you're <laughs> right. They are. They are also having ex extraordinary adventures uh, and experiences. So having more experience in life, you can't do that or you can't do it in a meaningful way if you don't have financial freedom, if you're always worried about money. And the fifth one is giving back to your community because none of it's worth it if you can't give back to your community. So today we're going to focus on pillar number three. Our guest is going to tell us how to focus on pillar three, number three, using a very specific investment strategy. And his name is Vinny Chopra. And Vinny smiles Chopra, I should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, 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 they, and it's true. The man constantly smiles. He's one of the most joyous people I've ever met in my life. And Vinny and I, I met Vinny and Jeff also met Vinny in a very similar way. He yes. was a, a, a multifamily investor, which Jeff and I do a lot of multifamily investing, but he's recently made the transition from multifamily investing into senior living. And that is, that's, I think, a difficult concept for people to, to understand, Vinny. So tell us what senior living exactly is. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be on your show, uh, Jillian and Jeffrey. You are great friends, and thank you. It's such a pleasure. You know, I don't know if you know that I'll be 72 coming up next month. I mean, in August, in August, 72. So for the last five years, I've been looking at demographical shift happening in this country. And we used to say that 10,000 baby boomers are turning 65 every night. That number is 11,200 now. Every night, we are becoming seniors, 65 plus. And about 4,000 of us are turning 80 years and 85 years every night. So that's when I just pivoted about five years back. I said, let me look into this. And I was so glad that I you know, got into it. I wrote a book also. It just got published last month, uh, Senior Living Investing Made Easy. But essentially what it is is that our whole money structure, our whole economy is going to shift towards spending habits and living habits of the seniors. And you know, that's why. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, you know, J Jillian knows this, but like we had a guest on. Uh, last life ever, oh, I don't know, five years ago, almost now, four, three or four years ago, for sure. Uh, Harry Dent, right? The mm. economist, Harry Dent. Yeah. And he said, this is pre COVID that he said this to us, or maybe right during the beginning of COVID. He said, if you're going to invest, you need to invest in things that demographically make sense. And when we asked him, he literally said, I would buy parking lots in India, or I would buy uh, senior living facilities in the Midwest. Wow. 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 I think and he was actually on, I think he may have said that on old fashioned real estate and not on the show. <laughs> that I, think about I had him on both shows at the same time. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that was on my other show, but, but regardless, Harry said yeah. that to, uh, to me. Wow. Anyway. Wow. And, and, and he's been and ever since then, I've been really interested in that market because, you know, he's a really smart guy and he's been ahead of the curve a lot. And so you must have watched old fashioned real estate back then and decided to switch fields. That must have been what happened. Maybe you're right. You're right. But the thing is, see, it just makes sense because we are short right now. Of course, I just have research and a lot of people can see that from the right side, there is no need driven senior living to need driven senior living. What I mean by that is like in retirement homes, or communities, golf courses, or townhouse. You know, people are uh, going downsizing is the word, but there is they don't need help in assistance. 
in cooking or anything, they can have a very good lifestyle. Then in the middle spectrum, it's assisted living and memory care. That's assisted living and Alzheimer, as you all know, that is a predominantly ADLs, activities of daily living, when they are impaired, if people cannot walk or talk, I mean, not talk, sorry, a walk and cook and bathe or take prescription or drive, that's where assisted living comes into play. So I've been building these uh, in Florida, in Virginia, all over the place from ground up assisted livings, 94 units to 98 units. But I've come to realize revelation in the last few months, like let's say six to eight months, it takes too long to build them. And even the loan structures are very difficult. Also, the cost of goods have gone up, right? Course, Just, yeah. yeah. So that's why I have shifted more now, already built assisted livings. And as a matter of fact, I want to talk about something very special, RALs, which is residential assisted living. What do I mean by that? That is single family home that has six bedrooms or eight bedrooms or five bedrooms, whatever. If we rent it for like $1,300 or $2,000 for the home, but with assisted living service combined into that one, each room can bring 4,000 rent. Okay, so, so I wanna stop for a second. Yes. So what you're saying is for several years, you were building, right? Yes. Building yes. Um, large assisted living facilities. Yes. And now you've shifted away from building these large scale, you know, 100, unit, 100 room facilities mm -hmm. down to where you're instead buying large houses and converting them into assisted living. So that seems like the opposite of what most people do, right? It seems like most people start with converting a house and then they decide to build like a big scale product. But yes. you're moving the other direction. So what, what caused you to make that decision? Well, the biggest thing was that, uh, Jeff and Jillian, what I found was the codes, compliance and everything, which is great. I don't mind that. But the construction loans really took me for a ride. Cost of construction went up 32%. So... I raised the money, then I had to re-raise the money to complete my structures, my buildings. And mm. then I said, oh my gosh, it took me, and my projects are behind by one year, almost one year and three months in certain you know, states. But the big thing is if I already have a structure already ready to go and I can get a license and I can manage assisted living, also, what happened was in the COVID, not in our centers, but the deaths happened during COVID at the big box, you know, senior assisted livings. That's 100, 200, 400, where the ratio of a caregiver to the patients or to the residents is 20 to 1. Mm. But residential, oh, wow. it's 4 to 1. In residential, mm. it's four or five to one. And I love that because in my mind, I want to give the best. It's not about profits. Yeah. I always say that I want to give the quality seniors care. That's what my overall theme is. Okay, let me let me ask you this. So let's say yes. I'm, I'm ready to move into an assisted living facility mm -hmm. and I'm trying to decide, do I want to go to a, a house with, you know, six bedrooms and presumably six patients for lack of a better word, right? Residents, um, yeah. Or do I want to go to a uh, a bigger box place that maybe might have more amenities, right? Like, I mean, you, yeah, you have more caregivers per patient, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I probably don't have like break rooms and, you know, movie nights and stuff like that. That's a good how, point. How do, we, how do we mitigate that? How do we decide? And what's the sales pitch to the customer? I'm so glad because in my larger ones, I'm making movie theater and all but also with large screens, you're able to have in family rooms of the single family home or in the living room, you can really have a fantastic night of watching the shows and movies and you can have outside people coming, performing. It's just that in the RALs, residential assisted living, you are able to have six in California where I live or 
10 in Arizona, where I'm really going big now in Arizona, in Phoenix, Arizona, and Scottsdale right there. And then in Texas, it's 16. Wow. In one residence, wow. single family home. So there are different state laws, but you're right. You know, I wouldn't be able to offer the spa. I wouldn't be able to offer like, you know, a library, let's say a big one. But the key thing I find is that seniors are loving smaller structures, much better because that reminds me of their own home and they can mm. build relationship with the residents and they're eating together and all that stuff, you know? So, so um, mm -hmm. but, but I mean, so for assisted living, most people need to have ground floor, you know, bedrooms, I would assume like it's good point. Difficult. So is it hard to find houses that meet this profile? You know, very good point. Actually, see, in single family homes, there are two bedroom, three bedroom, you know, or seven. I just bought one in Scottsdale area, 10 bedroom, nine and a half bath. So lots of the single family homes with larger space in the back side, you can add rooms to it or you could configure the whole structure. Garages are changed into bedrooms and things like that. I'm looking at another one which is like nine bedrooms and seven baths, let's say, another one. So lots of these single family homes can be converted into the assisted living spaces. But you're right. I don't want elevators. I don't want, if there is a second, like two story bedroom, we have the caregivers stay upstairs. Hmm. The caregivers can stay upstairs and only the residents can stay downstairs. So, Vinny, have you thought about um, possibly buying older hotels that also have like a, a elevator in them to convert them? Because right now I'm doing hotels to apartments and though, but I like I'm seeing an, a real opportunity here because then you don't have to even you might not even have to put in kitchens if you're doing like true assisted well, or living. even you the could just old do. roadside ends, right? With like yeah. the, right. Yes. long floor rooms. Totally, totally. You're hundred percent right, Jillian. I'm so glad you said that. That's my my, other... my wheels are spinning. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm like, this is. What I want. I want to start looking for some hotels to convert. <laughs> totally. Let's yeah. partner. So if I find a property, I need to call you, right? That's what you're yeah. Telling me. Let's partner because see, I was looking at a comfort suites hotel actually in Phoenix area. I almost put an offer on it, and while looking through the licensing and everything, we found out the old elevator will not work. So I had to put another elevator at the end of the hall. 350,000 was the cost to put that. Then the other thing I found was even in the suites hotel, they were bigger rooms, but there has to be a partition, some kind of even slow partition between the two seniors living in the same room. So it's much better if we can give them one room at a time and the bathrooms have to be changed a little bit, you know, ADA compliant and so forth like that. So mm -hmm. definitely converting hotels or motels, which are one story is ideal, ideal, you know, and they have the professional kitchens, if they have restaurants, something like that. So it can be all arranged, yes. Yeah, that's that sounds really good. What I like most about this story though is, um, it's it's really cool that you have this very specific strategy you're working on now, but you didn't start here. Jillian alluded to this at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a great story. We actually had you on our show before, so people can go back and look at that old episode and hear your your background. But but you were doing multifamily real estate. You're doing, I mean, I think you started with single family originally, right? And then moved to multifamily and mm -hmm. had thousands of units. It's mm -hmm. not like you had one one twenty one unit billion. building. I got into one over one building. billion, by the way. <laughs> I mean in the last fourteen years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So so doing a billion dollars with the real estate and then you transition into building you know these assisted livings and then you're transitioning into converting houses like the exact opposite side of the scale. And what I like the most about that is you just said you're seventy almost seventy two years old and you're still willing to pivot and do different things. So how do you 
how do you see these opportunities? Like, what are you doing differently than the average person that gets stuck doing the same thing? Their you whole know, life? I'm so glad you're asking me this because I've been selling. I've been selling my portfolio for the last seven years, actually. I got into the peak. And then last year, I just sold another one in Melbourne, Florida. Last Friday, Wednesday, I sold one in Knoxville, Tennessee about three weeks back at a good peak because it was a zoomable loan. I sold... I have not bought anything for the last four years almost. <laughs> so I've been wow. selling, selling, selling. I have only three left now out of my all the multifamily. Just three are left. That's it. And we have one, which is a very big one. I bought it in COVID in Austin, Texas, 319 units. It went from 35 million to 58 million right now. Because That's we great. bought it at the right time and we got good loan. I think it's 3.89% assumable loan. So yeah, you know, that's the, the only one left. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> but I like to pivot. My mentality is as a business to grow or to look out in the future with the interest rate cuts that happened. I mean, not cuts, but they increased 22 times last year. The year before, I had already thought about not buying anything because everything was just cash poor, right? You know, it was red ocean. So to really grow my company, I had to decide which way I'm going. So residential, I mean, a residential assisted living or assisted living per se, we are 1.4 million beds short as of today. 1.4 million beds. With 11,000 people retiring every retiring day. Retiring every day. Yeah, and, every. And, and people reaching 84,000, you said, a day. That, that's yeah. an impressive stat. So like, and I mean, obviously, some of these people die off. Like, people don't live yeah. forever. But, totally. but I'm guessing that people are reaching 80 faster than people are dying off. You know, you're so right. I mean, you know, the thing is, our average stay of a senior is 30 months. And they never move. Once they come into our center, like 94 units or otherwise, unless they get really, really sick, they have to go to the hospital, of course, or rehab center, because we don't have doctors. We don't have any medical equipment in the assisted livings, but we are able to give them full care, 24-hour care, good meals, good exercise, all that, yeah. You know, I have an uncle in an assisted living facility up in Michigan, and he's been there for about seven or eight years now. He's 103, so, mm. you know, he's an anomaly for sure. But yeah. uh, he's doing really well, though, but he loves it, right? Like, he yeah. has his own – I don't know how yours are set up, but he's got his own space. So mm -hmm. he has, like, his own little apartment. He even has a tiny kitchenette, so if he oh. wanted to cook for himself, he could. Oh. Um, you know, but it's like, you know, it's like a – just like a single burner stove kind of thing. It's not like an oven and everything like that. And, yes. um, but he, he usually goes down to the, you know, main dining hall for food sure. and stuff like that. But every once in a while, he'll make himself a pot of coffee or something or tea or whatever. But sure. But it's a, it's a really interesting uh, model. And, and, and it's something that like, when we think about life, mm -hmm. we want somebody to watch over us when we're in our later years. We want to be in the position where we can do that. Have you thought about that for yourself? I mean, you mentioned your own age. Um, mm -hmm. Is part of the reason you're motivated to do this so that you can have a good place for yourself when, you're, when your time comes You forward? know, that's so true. My friends, myself, everybody, because as we are growing younger, I always say we never grow old, you know, we are growing younger and younger and younger. But the thing is, when we are able to not cook or there is a slip or fall, and or if spouse passes away, that's what we find. When the spouse passes away, then it's a de declining. And most of about 70% of our residents are women, by the way. They outlive, you know, the husbands. So what we are finding, you're right. My main thinking right now is that I want to do as many of these senior livings because I can bring value to all the people around. And hopefully one day I might go into my Phoenix Scottsdale facility and get hooked up there, you know? <laughs> sure. No, you, you still live in, in uh, central Northern California. Yeah, right? I live near San Francisco in Danville, California. That's yeah. where it's on the east side of the Bay, you know, and nice. we have, yeah. Yeah. And you've been there 20 years or more now. No, right? 44 years. We've been married 44. 44 years. We moved here 1980. 
and with the grace of God, you know, and thanks to real estate, you know, we bought our first home for $99,000. It's 1.8 million, I just found out, wow. But then we went to second home, third home, fourth home. Now we are in a beautiful country club home and thanks to commercial real estate, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely <laughs> nice when you can set yourself up. We had a guest on recently um, who his job was eliminated ah. and um, he had been investing in real estate for a decade before that. And he was able to just easily transition, transition. because he prepared in advance. And that's really what you're talking about. Right? Yeah. It's about totally. um, doing the things to put yourself in a position where you're not dependent on someone else. So true. So true. I mean, I don't have to work, you know, but the thing is when I say, if I don't stimulate my mind every day and be passionate about something, I'll wither away. Literally. I mean, I'll be thinking about wrong attitude. Yeah. And, so, yeah. <laughs> what, what else do you do to keep yourself young? I mean, obviously the stimulation from work, but I mean, I know you travel a lot. You know, we were we talking do. off offline about how you mm -hmm. were just in Istanbul and Italy and Japan. Yes. Um, yep. So, so how do you pick that? Like what, how much time a year do you spend traveling? Well, I remember you were in Morocco we did, not that long We ago. did four trips, five trips last year, I think with my wife and I and children, we like to do two with Neil and Monica, all that. We went to Argentina, we went to Buenos Aires, we went to Patagonia down south there. Then uh, we are planning going to Sri Lanka next year. We are going to Cancun. Usually we go for family reunion, uh, Jeffrey and Jillian, but try to really do three to four big long vacations. We just got back from two, you know, yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So enjoy the time and charities, you know, giving to charities. We just donated money for uh, schools in Africa and then India and all See, this. this is <laughs> this is why it was important we mentioned all five pillars, right? Because yeah. what you're saying is you're trying to help people. That's your purpose right now. You're helping mm -hmm. investors. You're helping elderly folks by providing them a good, safe, quality place. And you are, um, you, I'm, we didn't talk about habits, but I'm for sure you didn't get to where you are without having good <laughs> habits. You found financial freedom for yourself. And because of that financial freedom, you're able to have these extraordinary experiences that you were just talking about, you know, being able to go to um, Buenos Aires and, and obviously Istanbul. And I think you did go to Morocco. I'm not imagining yeah, we did. We went to Facebook. Morocco. We went yeah. to Portugal last year. Then we went yeah. to a whole trip to Budapest and Amsterdam last year. We did yeah, all see, that. So <laughs> amazing, long travel experiences. <laughs> And then also doing the charity and giving back to the yeah. world. So you're really living the life exactly how we, that's why I was happy to have you back on a uh, second time anyway, because thanks. your life is an example of what we all uh, really should be striving to live like. And I'm just staying positive through it, which, you know, for me, that's the most important thing, right? Is that I talk about positivity all the time and about giving up bad days. And, you know, we've talked about this. Like, mm -hmm. I think you have about a hundred podcasts. I can't even keep up. I think you have a, one podcast coming out every single day now. Do you have a five podcasts a week or four? I now? have five in the sense apartment syndication made easy. Then I have my abundance mindset show, which is live every Thursday, 9 a.m. Then I have Vinny and Bo show. Then we have Desi Money show. <laughs> then yeah. I'm writing books. Positivity brings profitability. I revise that one. And, come. you know, it just helps me in the morning. I get up at five or so, around five, do my miracle morning routine and really gratitude and doing exercise and keeping my mind right. If I can reset my mind every day, it's so important, you know, for everybody, for everybody. Yeah, eating that's, right, I, eating right. That's so fantastic, and I'm, I mean, and I mean, we could come, we could talk about this stuff forever. Like, I, I every time I talk to you, I feel this way. Like, I could just hang out with you every day, all day long, and be, be a happy person. <laughs> um, I have to ask a follow up question then, because um, mm -hmm. so you're not raising money, you're doing this with your own capital, maybe mm -hmm. some family money or whatever, but but primarily, you know, small small groups, right, like that. Um, and you're saying it's easy for other people to do it as well, which mm -hmm. is great. I love that. But um, let's say I had the perfect location picked out and I was going to buy it and I could figure out the real estate side because I, I know how to buy a property. Sure. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I would have no clue how to manage 
uh, residential assisted living. What do I, what I need to know? What do I do next? After I would I buy love it? to. I would love to say it's so easy. In my academy, I teach every Wednesday. Actually, tonight I'll be teaching four o'clock to five thirty. Anybody? Oh well, this is not going to be here right away, right? You know. But any anybody could come at four o'clock. But what it is is that you just Google and find an operator in that zip code who has the license for assisted living. That's all you need. You meet with them and they will kind of share with you if that location is a good location, what the restrictions are by the state and so forth. There yeah. are also companies who can manage that REL for you too. That's great. There are, yeah. So so you find a local operator, you mm -hmm. pick the location, get a good operator, figure out what kind of stuff works, and yes. then go find it and buy it and, and let that local operator totally. manage it for you. Totally, totally. I love that. Love yeah. that. I, uh, Jillian, we have a new project. <laughs> Last Life Ever Assisted Living. I think it fits really well with our brand. Like, I you know, love it. I really love it, actually. I, 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 I would love to um to diversify my portfolio to include some stuff like this so please, I'm, I'm actually please. really excited about it and i'm also fascinated by this other transition like moving away from raising because like you know what made you Vinny, mm -hmm. like famous i think you know yeah. to the extent that you're famous right is your book um real estate syndication made easy, made easy. right which was yeah. a big international bestseller it's a great book i recommend it to people but that's all about I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't know you when you wrote it, but I assume that the reason you wrote it was because you were raising money and you wanted exactly. people to reach out to you. Right? I started so with one thousand dollars. Yeah, no, I started. My my family didn't believe in me when I started that business seventeen years back. They said we need take thousand dollars. That's all, and I raised two hundred twenty million. Wow. Through the techniques yeah, and my investors, I have 700 some investors now. But the thing is, I'm shifting. As I sold these properties, multifamily now, I just have a picture in my mind. I don't want to be on $20 million loan anymore. I don't want to be on the put my neck out for 20 $47 million loan that I've been on. You know, as I'm selling the multifamily, I'm taking my own wealth that I've accumulated and mm -hmm. getting into RELs without. I, I love it. I love yeah, it. That, yeah. It's it's so smart um, to make those transitions at different points in your life, at different points in the market cycle. Mm -hmm. um, it's really brilliant. Well, Vinny, if people want to get a hold of you, they want to reach out to you, they want to follow you. What's the best place for them to find you? Totally. You know, they could go to vinnychopra.com, V I N N E Y. Chopra.com. And then, you know, I, I have got Academy. I've got uh, free books, by the way. Oh, please go to winniechopra.com slash free benefits. So my author designed a page and all my three books, one can get for free, digital copies and nice. audio, audio copies too. Yep. That's great. I, yeah. Thank you for doing that, uh, by the way. Sure. I've read, I think, all but your most recent book of the yes. books that you have and, and they're they're really really well put together books i uh -huh. particularly like positivity makes profitability and i understand you completely changed it after i read the first version of it <laughs> so i need to go back and read the second version of it as well uh, but really great stuff and, i'll send uh, the I, audio copies of that one and also audio copy of my senior living to both of you yeah and oh, i'm available you so to far. you any day any time you'd like me to meet just separately too i'm available oh you know? yeah no Vinny, you've always been super accessible uh, that's one of the reasons i love you thank you so much for being on the thank show 